So today is an exciting day. I am sitting in a new project car. This is the electric conversion project car. I've been wanting to do this for a while and had the opportunity to start a new project. And uh, I'm just going to show you what it is. And if you know what a ute looks like, you'll know that this is a ute. No seats behind me. I've got dual sunroofs. It's a uh, old Brumby. I'll get out and let you have a look. As you can see, it's not in the best shape in the world. Clear coat's coming off. It's got this ugly, ugly canopy. <laughs> a couple little bits. I've got to fix up for Rego, rust wise. And... But that's the Brumby. Comes with the Sun Rages, the Brumby, dual sunroof, air conditioning that doesn't work, a bit of dirt. My plan is to clean it up really good and um, figure out figure out exactly how to do conversion. A lot of options, so uh, a lot of thoughts and ideas which I'll share soon. So I did a couple of things on the Brumby over the weekend. I'll give you a look at what we did. For Rego, I had to do a CV boot, which is very common on um, on Subarus, especially on this side, on the driver's side inner, up here, just above the exhaust. It always goes, it's the first to go on the Subarus usually, the one that's just above the exhaust. Probably can't see it up there, but anyway. And also get the engine to degrease because for Rego it can't be leaking any oil. Engine's going to be coming out anyway. That's just a legality. And also a couple of touch-ups of rust I have to do. For example, this back here. I don't know if you can see that. Up there, my finger is, about a 20 cent piece. A couple of bits like that I've got to touch up. Tinted. That's got to go. Almost an hour of 180 grit. Still needs touch up, but that's just for Reggio. In Australia, they can't have any blackout. So someone's tried to black blinkers. Don't know why that's cool, but someone thought it was. So that's got to go too. So I've decided to keep the drive line on the Brumby standard and the rear diff has a bit of a leak so I'm going to clean it up. I'll show you the before and after. Um, it was a little bit low but it looks not too bad condition. But um, here's what it looks like so far and I'll show you the after. Not dripping but it's had a leak for a while. So I'll give it a clean down and show you what it looks like after. Much nicer. Hello, so um, back working on the Brumby. As you can see behind me, this is the last time the engine's going to be in there and operating, so um, get a crack at it. Um, I've taken a lot of Subaru engines out before at work, so we'll see what this one's like to do. Hoping to give a bit of a time lapse so you can see what it's like. When I'm removing the engine, I just have to make sure that I leave things to the side that I may need later so electrical things and any other hoses or vacuum lines that might be used elsewhere in the conversion. I need to retain a few things for the conversion so that's what I'm doing as you're watching. The Brumby was available in Australia from 1978 actually. It was pretty popular with farmers. It had a 400 kilo payload and its uh, tear weight, the dry weight, was 940 kilos, so pretty handy little thing. Um, this particular one has an EA81, which is a 
61 kilowatt 1.8 liter four cylinder that's actually an option for a turbocharged 70 kilowatt i also have to mark everything that i unplug just in case i need electrical um connections for wooden fans or anything very really well come across or ignition feeds so everything's been taped and marked as to what it is at this stage of the build i'm purely concentrating on getting the engine out of the car and any bits and pieces that I know I'm not going to need for the electric conversion whilst I have access to stuff and work jacks and um, engine cranes that's what I plan to do this is actually a 1990 model with the optional sunroof so that's cool There's actually heaps less space on these old Brumbies than uh, later model Subarus actually put in the engine out. I still have a condenser in there because I want to retain the air conditioning system in case I want to use it with a conversion. But radiator had to come out to get any room at all to get this motor to come out. So hopefully I don't have to um, split the aircon system, we'll see. Depending on how complex you want to go, you can get electric aircon compressors, that sort of thing, which adds a little level of complexity and also train on your uh, system running an air conditioning compressor. So we'll see if we end up using that or not. For now I just kept it. Aircon belt. Pretty cracked. Ready to get replaced anyway. According to Cars Guide, a 1990 model Brumby is worth between four and six thousand Australian dollars. This was much less than that, and I'll give details on costs at the end of the builds. That way you can see everything. But um, let's just say it's a lot less than a Tesla. That being said, obviously it's not going to go as good as a Tesla, but that's not the idea. The idea behind the Brumby uh, was actually that it's a versatile vehicle and it's small enough that it's not cumbersome and it's not too big that it takes up lots of space and it's hard to drive. Also, Brumbies perfectly fit mountain bikes in the back. Just turn the handlebars sideways and they fit in nicely. Also, there's a good amount of space in the tray for batteries if I end up putting them in the tray. We'll see. And yeah, the layout at the front in the engine bay is pretty good space-wise for fitting an electric motor, obviously north-south. At this point in the video, I'm probably undoing some things at the back of the motor, probably the bell housing to the gearbox. And after that, probably putting it up in the air and um, seeing what underneath I need to take off to get this engine out. This vehicle and this project as a whole is actually being funded. So I'm extremely thankful to be able to get experience doing some electrical conversion because the electric industry and hybrid automotive industry is massive and it will only increase. So very glad and thankful to have the opportunity to do something like this. So there are a couple things that I'll need to keep in mind, which I'll show you. For a conversion, the rules state that if it has power steering, it must have power steering with a conversion. This does not have power steering, but I still need to run a vacuum pump for the brake booster, which has to have vacuum all the time, so that you have proper application of brakes. Um, the other vacuum source that might be needed um, is gonna be for 
in the car when you change from recirculating uh, vents to fresh air vent. Um, I'm pretty sure this model has a vacuum source to switch that flap on the inside of the dash. And just working out what's what in the engine bay is a bit different um, to later model things. But there's a little vacuum um, storage tank which might be for the breather for the motor. Um, it doesn't actually go into the cabin. This vacuum storage tank here, which had a hose that went onto the motor. I don't know if that's going to be for that. However, this one which wraps around all these fuel lines goes up into the firewall. So just things to consider as I go along. So obviously I'm not going to wreck that, keep it in place, keep those two vacuum things in place just in case I do need them. So um, everything up the top is undone. I'll give you a quick view. This is where the engine and the bell housing, the gearbox meet. Everything is undone as far as top goes. Let's see, let's move that. The gap opens very slightly there. Everything up the top is ready to go. I've got heater hoses separate because I need to keep them for um, potential heater. It needs to have a demister as far as rego goes. And other wiring over this side. Um, I have to keep separate. I'll keep everything intact until everything's been labelled. Just don't know what wiring I may or may not need as I said before. And I've got about 150 mil of space, so hopefully that gives me enough room to get it out. I'm fairly confident. But we'll see how we go. I'll get it up and get this stuff underneath hopefully off and then we'll get it out. Mm-hmm.